Alright guys, what's going on? Welcome to your next Android tutorial. Um, sorry about the long wait between them. Been doing a few bits, reinstalling Windows, getting stuff set up again. But anyway, we're back and today we're going to cover... Uh, this is an interesting little trick not, or quirk you can do with Android involving fragments and it's saving data or saving an object using a fragment for an activity rotation. It's a strange concept. So we're very quick, quickly going to create new project, Android application project. Uh, it's going to be called saving state and changes to TE as usual. Uh, for my minimum SDK, I'm going to go with 4.0 because I'm lazy and I don't want to deal with support libraries and stuff at the moment. Uh, bugger. Hmm. For some reason it doesn't say I have the support library installed. I'll fix that. I'll be back in a sec. Okay, so I fixed that little issue. It was a bug in the Android tool to update uh, revision to them that is, isn't available through the SDK manager and blah, 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 blah. Big pile of nothing. Anyway. So what we're going to do is, we're going to create a an object, okay, a data object. Um, what we're actually going to do is, we're going to cache an image. We're going to cache the logo of the app inside a frag. We're going to make a cache, okay, essentially an object which will hold the data. And then we're going to save a complicated piece of data. In fact, we won't even use an image, we'll just use some text or something like that. But we're going to create an object it's going to contain data and then we're going to save it through rotation now this is meant for complicated data if you're saving strings in uh, booleans that kind of thing use the save instance state method very easy just add it to the bundle out return on the bundle in if bundle is not equal to null blah 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 this is a slightly more complicated version and it's used for caching very complicated objects such as image caches and other things so in order to get started we're going to create a fragment for our stuff. And it's going to extend fragment. And we're just going to call this cache fragment. Okay. And we're going to override its on create view. Actually, we don't need to do on create view, we'll just do on create. Okay, so. Control Shift O. What? Alt Shift O. No. Control Shift O. That's a little bit bizarre. Can't seem to remember the shortcut. I haven't used this in a while. I've been using um, Android Studio, but Android Studio is a lot more complicated. Anyway, get our own on create method in there. So. We're going to create another class inside this fragment class. We're just going to make it a private class. I'm just call this cache. Okay. No, oh, it's not. It's an inner class. Derp. I'm being an idiot. Okay, so we've got our, ca our cache class, and we're just going to have a uh, string data, you know, and then we're just going to uh, generate a getter and setter. Okay. Love being able to do that. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create our fragment cache, okay? Our, our, our cache inside our fragment object. So we're going to say cache. New C A C H E. Okay. And then in the on create. We're going to say cache dot set data or set data. And we're going to type in Okay, 
Okay. And then in the fragment itself, we want to add the hell. And what we want to do is uh, we need to create a getter and setter for the cache inside the fragment object. Okay, so we've got that ready. I'll make this a private variable just so that nothing can go wrong with that. Okay, so now we've got all that ready. What's going on? That's Control Shift S brings us up, and you got it down. Anyway, um, now that we've got all this working, what we're going to do is we need to call a method on this because what happens with fragments is when you have a fragment in an activity, and when you rotate the device, let's say, the activity is completely broken down and rebuilt from scratch. But what happens when you rotate is all the fragments also get wiped out. But what you can do is you can set or you can tell a fragment not to do that. You can tell a fragment to not wipe itself out. And then when the activity reloads the fragment back into it, it will remain with all of its variables intact. In order to do that we have to say set, I will say this dot set retain instance true. That will tell the fragment not to uh, do that now. Normally, you want this to happen. Normally, you want it to be broken down so we can realign list views and blah blah blah. blah. This prevents that. So, in our on create, we're going to get our fragment. So, we're going to say fragment. Import. Okay, and then we're going to say um, we have to add it to our activity. So we say we get a fragment manager. Fragment manager equals this dot get. Fragment manager. It's not support because we're not using action bar activities or action bar Sherlock. Nope, need to get rid of that import. Okay, so now we've got a fragment manager. FM. Or now we've got a fragment manager. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to add our fragment. Uh, we're going to create a fragment transition. Okay. In fact, we need to move. We'll move this around now in a minute. Okay. Our fragment transaction. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is we're going to give this uh, a tag. So we're going to say fm.add, nope, uh, fragment, so it's ft.add, our frag, and our tag is going to be cache. Because we're adding this fragment to the activity without Ah, yes, wrong import. Sorry, I'm so used to working with the support library. It's actually weird working without it. This has to be Android app fragment. Current min is eight. The min is not eight. I set the minimum. God damn it! Minimum SDK, 
Uh, we've got 15. That should be that. Anyway, we've got it. Okay. We've sorted that issue out. I guess it's all over the place. Is that large writing? No, small writing. Okay, so anyway, we've got our transition ready. So what we've done now is we've added our fragment to our fragment manager or to our activity and it's cached. But when the activity rotates, it re-adds everything to the fragment manager. So what we need to do is we need to test. Okay, I'm getting a little bit crossed up in this, mixed up in this myself, because this is something I've had a little bit of trouble with. But we get our fragment manager and then we test to see if our cache fragment, cache fragment exists. If it exists, we load it from the fragment manager. Otherwise, we create a new one and add it to the activity. That's what I'm trying to say. So we need to move that up there. So fragment frag, okay? Uh, frag equals new cache fragment. So we say if fem.get find fragments by tag, And then we type in our tag. Uh, is not equal to null. So it returns null if there's no fragment. So if it's not equal to null, okay, don't forget, if it's not equal to null, we need to type in else. So we move this in here. Okay. So if our fragment manager, uh, it's not equal to null, so it means there is one there, we get it and we assign it. So we say fm find fragment by tag, cache, sorry, frag equals that, otherwise we load a new fragment. And then you know, we make a new fragment and we add it to our activity. So when we rotate, that cache should rate, retain its instant state no matter what. Now, it's very hard to actually show this happening because you know we, we create the cache and all like that. But if we run this and we inspect this, we should see that this uh, you know, data string in here is good. But essentially, you're caching an object inside of a fragment, setting the fragment and retain instant state so that when the activity reattaches it your data is still there and you can pull out your cache or your images or whatever you want i can't exactly show this working because it's a little bit tricky but uh, if i start up a new virtual device I have to create one off the top of my head okay so i came up a way to see if it's cached if we test this here and we uh, we make a very simple toast okay we do this. Frag dot get. Okay, I need to actually change this to be a cache fragment. Get cache. Get data. And then short. So okay. And then we need to show it. So essentially what will happen is uh, if the fragment is there, so when we start up the device or when the device starts up, well, hey, ready to go. So what happens is, I'll wait for it to load up the icons a little bit, there we go. So essentially what's going to happen here is we're going to load up the fragment and when it loads up, or we load up the activity, when it loads up it's going to see there's no fragment, it's going to add it. Then if we rotate it, the device and if the cache is still there so this will only this toast will only pop up if the cache was found already and then it'll load it otherwise we're going to get a null pointer exception here so we'll run run as android application 
and we'll see what happens. Okay. Okay, so nothing showed up. Okay, now it's loaded up fully now. Okay, it's taking its time, but as you can see, nothing has come up. So let's try rotating. So the cache has created the last activity, and that means every single time we rotate the device, that toll should pop up. I know why it's not working and I am so stupid we have to commit our transition for our fragment I am so stupid sometimes happens to everyone we never committed the transition so what happened there are the transaction so what happened was the fragment essentially we created it we added it but we never told it to put it into the fragment manager we just said eh, ignore that yeah, yeah I told you all that yeah just leave that out so let's load up okay so no toast data goes here as you can see it cached the data it was already there and if we hit control F11 again data was cached perfect absolutely perfect so that's a simple technique of fragment caching and uh, it's a very cool technique they use this in um, an example on the Android developer site where they actually show the cache working a little bit they use it to uh, cache images so they have a data cache of images I say 10 you know 10 images on a list view and they're being recycled and it checks in the cache okay there's nothing there then it loads it from the network and once it's loaded, it's put into the cache and overwrites the last, the least written image. It was a very cool little example. And they save the object, or the cache object they had, inside a fragment like this. It was a very cool bit of code. That's where I got the idea from. So anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed that little uh, tip. And as always, guys, it's been good talk. And I'll see you out there.